wangu hakuna mungu kama wewe hakuna mungu kama wewe hakuna mungu kama wewe ewe mungu wangu cha kutumaini sina ila damu yake Yesu sina wema wa kutosha dhambi zangu kuziosha cha kutumaini sina ila damu yake Yesu sina wema wa kutosha dhambi zangu kuziosha sina wema wa kutosha ila damu yake Yesu sina wema wa kutosha dhambi zangu kuziosha wastahili kuabudiwa wastahili Yesu wastahili kuabudiwa wastahili wastahili kuabudiwa wastahili Yesu wastahili kuabudiwa wastahili wastahili kuaminiwa wastahili Yesu wastahili kuaminiwa wastahili wastahili kushujudiwa wastahili Yesu wastahili kushujudiwa wastahili upendo wa Yesu kweli ni wa ni wajab upendo wa Yesu kweli ni wa ni wajab waweza kwenda juu waweza kwenda chini waweza kwenda mbele waweza kwenda nyuma upande upande kwa mataifa yote upande upande kwa mataifa yote thank you jesus that's all and indeed thank you jesus we bless god we thank god for you please let us open our mouth and thank god first because the song say upendo wa yesu ni wajabu meaning the love of christ is beyond description it means you never end at you you can go it can make you go up whereas i end at you it can make you go down you never end at upande it can make you go side by side left right it can make you go in forward and go even behind so for that reason let you and i thank him just thank him for his love towards you thank him for his mercy thank him for his kindness thank him for his grace what a wonderful god we serve heaven and earth adores him father we thank you for your love that we cannot describe we here to say thank you for being gracious and merciful for be loving and caring how awesome is it to praise you lord How wonderful Lord we bless for your mercy. We give you praise and, for and honor. Goodness. We exalt your holy name. You you can God. unmute if possible. You never forsake us. Thank you. Thank you. you can use any language you feel comfortable. Thank you. you thank are him. I'm God. Heavenly Father, we thank you. I adore you. We give you praise. <laughs> What a wonderful day. Thank What a glorious day. You are wonderful God. You are awesome God. We thank you for being merciful. We thank you for gathering us once again. We thank you King of glory. You are so good and kind to us, Lord. Thank you Jesus for the life that you have granted us to us really. For what you are doing to our lives, for bringing us this far. It is you only God that you have kept us this far. We are grateful to our for your mercy, for your love. For your provision thank you jesus 
for giving for us the life. For the sins and unseen battle that you fight for us. Thank you for yesterday. Thank you for today. Thank you for what you are doing. Thank you for gathering us together. Our Lord, we bless your name. Thank you, Jesus, Thank you, Jesus. for the food you have set on the table. For the battle that you for fight, we may not see. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for arranging things on our favor. Thank you for bringing us this far. Jesus. Thank you for this forum you have given unto us. Thank you, you for what you have passed in the day. Jesus. What a wonderful thing. How glorious is it to praise you. How awesome is it to honor your name. We bless you for who you are. Father, thank you for being such a loving Father that you love us at all costs, without any condition. We are grateful. For you to are done. Thank you, Jesus, for the miracle of sleeping and waking up. Thank you, Father, for always being in the midst of those who stand with us. Thank you, Lord, for leading us out safely and bringing us back safely. Thank you, Jesus, for the men and women you have raised to pray on our behalf. Thank you for the testimony. Thank you for the healing. Thank you for the deliverance. Thank you for your grace that we don't even deserve. Thank you for writing our names in the book of the living. Our heavenly father, we bless you. How awesome you are, oh God. How gracious, Lord, you are. We bless your name. Thank you, Jesus. For the free gift of the Holy Spirit, our God, we bless your name. We bless your holy name. We are so happy to be led by your spirit. We are so happy to be counted among your people. We are so happy for what you are doing and what you continue to do. Thank you for the dreams and revelation. Thank you for the prophecy. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise and honor. We give you praise, O oh Lord. Oh, Adonai, we worship you. Adonai, we give you praise. You are gracious and merciful. Oh, Lord. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, we pray and believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want you. I see Anyalo. You want to sing? <laughs> <laughs> glory, glory. If God put it in your mouth, I will. Uh, that is a song. Okay. I like to sing. Yeah. Uh, are okay, we on Facebook? Yeah, yeah, hallelujah. I'll do it. Thank you. <clears throat> if you're in a good position, it will be, be better if you would have seen you. Um, no, um, I'm, I'm not ready, but I will. I, I will uh, I'm not going to be able to put a video, but I will. Uh, okay, it's okay, it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Here you are moving in army. I worship you. I worship you. You are here moving in armies. I worship you. I worship you. He you are here working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are here working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. Way you make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, there is who you are. We make a promise speaker, miracle worker, like in the darkness. My God, there is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you, I worship you. 
You are here, touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, turning life around. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, turning life around. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, murdering every heart. I worship you. I worship you. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Like the darkness, my God, there is who you are. Way maker, promise keeper, miracle worker. Like the darkness, my God, there is who you are. Hallelujah. Who are you? I am the winner in the Lord. Who I am? I am the winner. In the Lord, who are us? We are the winner. In the Lord, walk like the winner. Talk like the winner. Hallelujah. Walk like the winner. Talk like the winner. Who are you? I am the winner. In the Lord, who I am? I am the winner. In the Lord. Talk like the winner. Walk like the winner. Hallelujah. Jesus, mighty God, is the mighty God. Jesus, mighty God, is the mighty God. Jesus, mighty God, is the mighty God. Everybody bow before him. He is the mighty God. Everybody bow before him. He is the mighty God. He is the mighty God. He is the mighty God. Jesus is the mighty God. He is the mighty God. He is the great I am. He is the great I am. Every knee bow before him. He is the mighty God. Every knee before him he is the mighty God. Even demon bow before him. He is the mighty God. Even demon bow before him. He is the mighty God. He is the mighty God. He is the mighty God. He is the wonderful God. He is the wonderful God. He is the great I am. He is the great I am. Everybody bow before him. He is the mighty God. Even angels bow before him. He is the mighty God. He is the mighty God, he is the mighty God. Jesus is the mighty God, he is the mighty God. He is the great I am, he is the great I am. He is the king of kings, he is the king of kings. He is the Lord of law, he is the Lord of law. Even every new bow, bow before him. Is the mighty God. I'm sorry, man of God, my voice is like, but thank you, God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Indeed, every knee bow before me. Thank you. We thank God for you, such a blessing. Well, we thank God for you. It's a blessing and it's a challenge to all of us, expecting that one day we just come and sing, 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 sing. Even we can spend like two good hours just singing. Praise God. Because I have realized we are surrounded with good singers, beautiful voices. So we bless God for you. Thank you so much, sister. Yeah, I request you and I, we open our mouth first. The Bible says in Romans chapter 3, Verse 10, he make us understand something of which I want us to see. He says that as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understand. 
There is none that seeketh after God. It means no one understands, not I, not you, and no one really seeks God. Verse 23 of the same Roman 3 say, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So what does that mean? If all of us we have sinned, we have to ask for mercy and forgiveness. So please open your mouth, open your lips, ask God for mercy, for knowing and knowing sin. Before we go to our Bible reading, we have to ask for forgiveness so that our prayer, our gathering, can be acceptable before God. But we know very well it's a holy God. Where there is sin, God cannot manifest himself. Father, in the name of Jesus, with all humility, we understand no understand. No one understands. No one even seek after God. We come before you, son of David, asking for mercy. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us, O oh Lord. Have mercy. Have mercy. Knowing and knowing the sin we have committed. Forgive us in the name of Jesus. Forgive us in the name of Jesus. Forgive us in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Those we know, those we do not know, we ask for mercy and forgiveness. We surrender our hearts to you. Everything has to do with us. Here we are and those on media, Facebook, whatever they have joined, have mercy on them. Forgive us. Do not banish us from your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit away from us. Sanctify us with the precious blood of Jesus. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, we pray and believe. Join me, we commit this hour into God's hand. Ask him that very thing you want God to do. Father, we have come. You have said, come unto me, who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Here we have come. Here are your children. Father, this day is a day that you have made. Come and touch your people. Come and heal. Come and deliver. Come and set the captive free. During your heartly ministry, during the heart, your heartly ministry, those who came, you heal them. During your heartly ministry, you heal, you deliver them all who are present. During your heartly ministry, All that followed you, you blessed them. During your earthly ministry, Lord Jesus, those who touched you, they were all made all. During your earthly ministry, Lord Jesus, those who are possessed, demons who are cast out, and people are delivered. Give us the same grace today. Give us the same grace in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, amen. Praise be to God. I will say to us, you are all welcome. Praise be to God. So we'll quickly go to our Bible reading. I want you to be rest assured you are in the right place. This is one of my requests I will make. As we are reading the Bible, let your heart don't be dormant. Either you may be saying, thank you, Jesus, in your heart, or take more of me and give me more of you. So that in the process of doing that, you will be seeing vision and God will be revealing to you many things as, the, as we continue. Holy Spirit, take of suit control in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. We remember last time we read something to do with Peter, Apostle Peter. We know he was one, he was the first apostle of Christ Jesus. So I would love us to look at chapter three. You know, last, last time we just read the chapter three and the discussion came up, all, which we did not expound on what we were studying. We just started discussing of something. 
But I would love to point out some few things before we continue. Whereby we remember it was something, discussion came up by saying, uh, somebody said he can not call his husband Lord. So we discuss over that one, we thank God. Now there is something that we had left in verse one of which I love us to see, where I say, likewise, okay, let me do this. Let someone read again. Can we have a volunteer, please? Okay, chapter three, verse one of first Peter. Likewise, ye wives be subjection to your husband, that if any obey not the word, they also may be without the word be won by the conversation of your wives. So here the Bible encouraged men, encouraged women to be subject or subjection to their husband. And he went further, if you look at this statement, it shows that he was mostly referring even to those who husband are not born again. Meaning that your submission to your husband who is not born again or a Christian, you have good behavior. The way you treat him, the way you submit to him, through that he can be convinced one to be like you or join you as a Christian by your behavior and manners, how you treat him. So he went further and said, while they behold your chastity, conversation, corporate fear, meaning when you look at the manner of your life, how you treat yourself, how you behave, you will be easily convinced to, be, to like to follow you to church, to like to pray with you. Praise God. So here it means that your only name being a Christian is not enough. It requires your behavior and actions while you are with that man who is not born again, not only man, it means that as a Christian, the way you live, the way you, your conversation is in front of non-believers matters a lot. The way you treat people, the way you respect them, it will determine either they can follow you or not. Praise God. So he went further and say, why, okay, Whose adoring let it not be that outward adorning of letting the hair and of wearing of gold and putting of apple, but let it be hidden man of the heart in, in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is the size, which is in the sight of God a great price. Okay. This is where some people get it wrong. Here it's not against you having makeup, you dressing nice, looking beautiful, having hearing. It is not against that. But it's referring, yes, as a woman or a Christian, you are expected to take good care of yourself, to look attractive, to look beautiful in front of your husband, to dress nice, because it gives God's glory. But he went further and said that, let not just dress nice outside, but inside you are a problem. What does that mean? That the way you spend time on mirror, taking care of yourself to look good for yourself and people around you to appreciate you. Also try to see that you take care of the inner person, your behavior, your character, your conduct, that when people see you outside and inside, the outside, let it be the reflection of what you have inside. What does that mean? Well, the Bible says that out of the abundance of heart, mouth speak, which means let this beautiful attire you put on be come from the heart. The way you look beautiful outside, you see many a times when I look at you, all of you, when I see you and come, I say, wow, you are very beautiful. Not that I just say it, indeed you are beautiful. So I'm expecting, as I say, yes, sister, let me use Harubo. I say, yeah, sister Harubo, you are beautiful. 
I'm expecting Sister Lugo, that beauty she shows me in the outside, let it be the inside, ah, a heart. Why? This is what is it costly. God honors such a heart that is beautiful, a heart that is kind, a heart that is forgiving, a heart is humble. Praise God. So that when men and women hear the words that come out of our heart, you know, the words that come out of our mouth does not just start from the mouth, start from the heart. That's why you see, if someone's heart is not good, it will always curse. How can we many a times know people who have good hearts? If you have a privilege to find them praying, that is when you know if a man is good or bad. Because a bit at heart, when he always is praying, is focused on killing his enemies. Everybody around him or her is an enemy. And those who are doing better than the person, he always say these people are the thieves. Praise God, everyone better than them. So here he's saying to us that let the adorning, let this what you put outside, not be only the outside, but the inside, so that when the good fruits out of your heart, people around you benefit it. They give God glory. They say, I really thank God for this woman. What a blessed is this man that married her. She's so kind. She's so good, beautiful as she look outside. So your heart is also beautiful. What does that mean? As an individual, it's high time you realize what we call your weakness and you consistently pray against your weakness. Why? When you pray against your weakness, that beautiful sister you are will come up. The way God created us, based on my personal experience, I realized that the way God created us in his image, we are perfectly correct and good in heart. But when we come outside, we get tortured, circumstances change our behaviors and even our character. So because of the experiences a man go through, they likely change their behavior and how they treat others. Why? I have seen if a man have ever been heartbroken, it is difficult for him to trust another man or woman. Same to a woman. If she have ever fell into a disappointment, it will change her, how she see everyone else. It will be very difficult for such a woman to trust someone or to love. So it means that before she was heartbroken, she was such loving or he was such loving. But in the process of his journey, he, he, he ended up changing, adopting some certain behavior as a result of what she have experienced in the past. So that one really concludes and say, indeed, when God created us in his image, he created us as beautiful, handsome people in his nature, image. So it is my prayer to you that listen to me, knowing that we are in Christ Jesus, as newly born baby, what does that mean? The pain men have caused us, the bad luck that the life have exposed you into, keep it aside behind you. That bitterness, that hatred, that disappointment, put it aside and be afresh like a newborn baby, like somebody who has never been hurt before. It's like somebody who has never felt pain. Why? When you, in the baptism, you died with Christ. So when you rose, you rose with Christ, living for Christ. It's no longer you live. It's no longer I live, but Christ. What does that mean? I used to be a drunkard. I used to be a immoral man. I used to be somebody full of jealousy and envy. But because I accepted Christ, when I was baptized, when Christ went, I went with him. And when he rose, I leave my sinful nature in the grave. And I rose, I rose now to live for Christ's sake. So the inner man me is a perfect man, perfect being. That is what God is expecting you. I know this. All of you under the influence of my voice, you are such beautiful women. And I'm really thank God for every man that married you. Why? Yes, you may have some mistakes you call you do to your husband, but I do this feel I have this conviction that you are such 
caring and loving women that take care of your husband. Praise be to God. And I thank God for that. I salute you all. Praise God. Listen, we went further of where the question came at why we should call. I cannot call. Somebody say she cannot call the husband life, but it was not a bad thing to say. So. Then we came to a conclusion say that the reason why a man can call a woman every beautiful name is because of what the woman means to that man. So, and I say is this, we call name to our loved one, not because of what we receive from them, but because deep inside our heart, I call you sweetheart, I call you love, I call you sweet princess. You may not be princess in physical, but to me, I see you as a princess. So it's the same way your husband, you may take a step to say my king. In a really sense, it's not a king, but because of what he means to you, you give him that name as a king. Praise God. Wonderful. Okay. As we proceeded, we had many things that came up which were beneficial to all of us, believing that by God willing, you have tried to apply them from that day until this day. So we'll continue. Of which I would love to say this, he said not only keeping on gold, the gold I will call it in the name, I will call it as good manner, good behavior. It is very funny when you are a woman with a man, you talk, he say something, he say A, you say B. No matter how you provide for them, always have this, let a man always have that thing to feel like he's a man, please. If you let that thing, I think you will not have problem. Sometimes when you hear him saying something, let him fill that position as a man. I have realized by personal experience, no matter how it is, men will always love to feel like men. They will love to be respected. They will love to experience, to feel that honor. They will love to be cherished. That's why many men leave women or their wife in their house, and they choose to stay around with, with people who are not their wives. Why? Their wives, many a times, they are used to them, and maybe they are the one paying every bill, so they don't see their value. But when you go outside, the other person will call him honey, will call him sweeter. But you, because you are used with him, you no longer even bother. So I will say this as a sign of respect or the way you take care of yourself look good. Same way, try as you can, you humble yourself in your home. You will not have problem. If you mistreat you, just do what Sarah did with Abraham. In the middle of a hardship, Sarah did never give up on Abraham. She was always there for him, no matter. No matter how things were, Sarah was. Sorry about that. Yeah, no matter how life was, Abraham with Sarah, Sarah, she was always there. Listen to what the Bible says. He said that, he mentioned something. He said, even the ornaments of meek and quiet spirit which is in the sight of God of great price. So meekness is required as a woman. And quiet spirit, it is required. But many a times I know, I don't really be in your houses, but I know many a times, men may not treat you well, but if you, they voice you voice, the house will become troublesome and it will not make any, there will be no peace. But here the Bible is required. You as a woman, try to have that we call a mixed spirit, quiet. Meekness is required. Try to humble yourself. I have realized if you try to sit down and see every proud woman, they end up being lonely. At the later age, they feel it. No matter how wealthy they may be. Every proud woman, many of them, they remain lonely. Praise God. But those who are humble, they always, yes, they stay with their husband. I know if we only try as we can and we apply Bible in our home, we'll stay married 
and this marriage, no matter how trouble it is in it, God will fix it. Why? I have realized one thing. Satan will never want a couple or a pre people who love each other to be together. And for that reason, it will always cause a trouble between lovers, partners. I have come to realize when a man and woman, they are always together for one hour or more than an hour, they'll raise an issue that will cause argument. So if a woman is not meek or humble, she wants to prove her right, some men cannot tolerate. And many a times, I will speak on the behalf of black men. There is that African mentality that is very difficult to change from men. No matter how it, men believe that men are men and women are women. That's why I see men do not agree with something like equality. But somehow I will agree with them. You know why? When God created, he created first Abraham, Adam, then Eve came as a helper. So you as a woman, no matter how it is, remember, you are a helper to that man. You came from the rib of a man. So you are just a helper. You are supposed to support him. You are supposed to stand with him. You are supposed to believe him. Even if he does what is not right, be there for him because he can never be complete without you. We know very well that the rib was taken from a man, which means a man by himself is just like having one rib. I will give you an example, like now I'm not yet married. It means I'm not yet complete. But when my perfect have come, I become perfect, complete. So you two that have been privileged to have a wife, a husband, just know that it is you complete this man. So what does that mean? You will have some many mistakes, maybe as a result of where he come from or the kind of friends that he surround himself with, the advices that he receive. But you as a Christian woman, Trust in God. Always continue praying on your knees and God will see you in your marriage. I believe if we do this as a woman, thus you look so beautiful in your home despite of what you are going. Remember this. No matter what happened in your home, never say, I will leave this marriage. If you say you will leave it, you still you leave it. But you say, I will not go anywhere. He's sleeping around and say, yes, you will get tired of sleeping there, but you will find him here. Time will come where he will realize himself and he will come back and be for you. He will kneel down and say, See, my dear, I'm really sorry. And he will respect you. So we come back. This is the Bible and it can never be changed. I, I continue by saying, you say, for after this manner, the old time, the only women also who trusted in God are done themselves being subjection unto their own husband. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughter he are as long as he do well, and not afraid with any amazement. So, if you really believe that Abraham is your father, and you believe Sarah being your mother, Bible is encouraging you. I, as a man, I see copying the formula, the lifestyle of Abraham, he loved Sarah. No matter what, Abraham loved Sarah. He listened to her. So you as a woman, you have to be like Sarah. No matter what it happened, she even went to an extent of calling Abraham, Lord, there is something happened if you have read the Bible. There are some two good incidents that happened to Sarah. She met a king and king decided to take her from Abraham. But because she was such a woman, devoted or decide, submitted to sub, love Abraham, she chose not to continue to be with the king and came back to Abraham. So the question, how many of us women, a man who is wealthy or a king, come and take you from your husband? Will you be able to stay with, it, with your husband or you'll go with the king? There are very few. But those who are listening, I believe, no matter what happened, stay with your husband, just like Sarah. She always was with Abraham. She supported him. When you take time and look at the lifestyle of Abraham, I do believe that Sarah had a very hard task. When God called Abraham, the life of Abraham was really difficult. 
Abraham did not have even a house. But Sarah believed in Abraham and they supported him until they were able to have a home. They were just nomads moving up and down without a home. They have no tent, they have no child. Sarah did not try to look for option to have a child outside being with Abraham. See the love of Abra Sarah had to an extent that to save his marriage, he told Abraham, you can have my maid and have a child. Abraham, because he loved the wife, he accepted. But see the kind of love Abraham had to his wife. When Sarah wake up and say, you know, let this woman live. Because he loved his wife, he agreed with that. How many men can do that? And how many women can give you a husband to sleep with another? No. Even in the Bible, it's not allowed. So the main thing here is that it means that Sarah did at all costs to preserve his marriage. You know how difficult is it to take a woman to sleep with your husband? It means you also do everything that it takes you to see that you preserve your home. For him to, for her to take a maid, it was like telling Abraham, don't go outside. I want you for myself. Better be with my maid. What does that mean? For your marriage to work, do every possible thing in the Lord to see that it works. Ignore insult, ignore rejection. I know when a man, demon enter him, they can treat you like nobody. You cannot even say anything and be this ad. I know that. But do whatever it is to see that you stay in your home. Asara went that far. So you can see, continue praying over your marriage. Continue interceding. Continue bearing with him and supporting him so that you don't let your marriage scatter. He said, you do well and are not afraid with any amazement. Meaning that if you try and follow the example of Sarah, you do well. And this pleases God. Don't be afraid. I am one of the people I don't believe in divorce because God does not allow divorce. I believe prayer change. I don't believe in divorce. Why? Prayer change things. Prayer changes us. We'll continue to pray until all our homes are been fixed because Abraham was with Sarah until Sarah died. So I'm expecting you to be with your husband until one of you, God call the person home. That is what I believe. No matter what it is, I believe and declare that your marriage will be a place of enjoyment. Yes, well, I will request from verse seven if I can have a volunteer to help us read. But before, okay, can we have a volunteer to read for us from chapter, from verse seven? First Peter, chapter three, verse seven. Okay, I will read. Yeah, please, sister. Are you reading, sister, okay. please? Yes. This is the word of the Lord. First, first Peter, uh, uh, whatever, chapter 3, starting from 7. It says, husbands, in, in the same way, be considerate as you live with your wives and treat them with respect as a weaker partner and as heirs with you of the gracious gift of life, so that nothing will hinder your prayers. Papa, let me repeat it because I could not see properly. Okay, husbands, in the same way, be considerate as you live with your wives and treat them with respect as the weaker partner and as heirs 
with you of gracious gifts of life so that nothing will hinder your prayers. Hinder means so that nothing blocks your prayers. Amen. Finally, all of you be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing. Because to this you are called so that you may inherit a blessing. Whoever would love okay. life. Sister. Yeah. Sister, please yes, stop Papa. there. I want us to look. Yeah, it is on the husband side, but I would love us to look. I would love us to go to see. Right I would love us to look at it. I don't know if you would love to say something and very bless your bread. I want us to go bit by bit. It's unfortunate that we, we are we don't have the husband, but at least since I always record this, you can take the video and play it in your home. One day your husband will likely sit and listen and he will keep quiet. And when he listen to this, my voice, his behavior will change towards you. So I record them. When I post, you can play that video in your house. One, you will sit and listen. Praise God. And I tell you, once you play it and you happen to listen even one minute, it will change. Praise God. So I would love, okay. either Sister Irene, I would love to say something where you have just read, because this is where many men, they do not know. You know, many a times men, you see them educated, well, they dress nice, respected, the way, but not that they know everything. You know this thing, marriage, marriage. There are people who get married because their parents, by the way, God forgive me to say this. Not every man can boldly show his love towards you. Some of them even to tell you, uh, to tell you, to start with you. It was either through a friend that approached you, then you also accepted. You just find yourself staying together. Even maybe some of you, your parents just say, you know, we get a man for you. That man could not come openly and say, you know, not like people like us. If I, example, if I found you, I'll come and tell you, I'll tell you openly, I really like you. There are very few men who can do that. That's why you see, Sometimes I give them excuse. Leave alone this one when they say I am a man. Many of them cannot easily come to you and say, you know, you are so beautiful. I would really love to be with you. There are very few men who say that. That one, you know how your husband came to you. Praise God. Amen. You can agree with me. You know how your man come to you. So... There are very few, I repeat again, who can easily stop a woman and say, hello, can I speak to you? Can I talk to you? Then they prolong story. They end up into marriage. And this is one of the reasons why some people have issues in the marriage. Because if a man came to you directly, they are totally different with the man who somebody brought to you. But if a man just came to you directly and approach you, the way he will treat you is totally different from the man who somebody brought to you. It means that that one who somebody used to come to you, he will still need someone to correct him. If they are listening to me, they, they, they are, I'm sorry to expose them. Praise God. That's why you see many of them can text you, hello, I love you. But when you are together, I cannot tell you I love you. I don't know, get me. Many of them, he can text you and say, ah, I love you. But he cannot tell you when you are together, he cannot tell you. <laughs> Maybe when he cannot look at your face. Okay. So here is the point. Unless you want to say something, something before I say it. 
you know, I'm just listening. Um, I'm just listening. The thing is, uh, like the way the Bible here is saying, like we have to, and like we have to love one another and respect like one another uh, for the husbands uh, to be considerate because they are considered, the husbands are the head of the family. So mostly husbands tend to have more like power in the house more than women, but here they are reminded like they have to be considerate, you know, but uh, it goes both ways. If a husband is nice to you, also we have you. Know, we have to be nice to them. Um, love is everything. For example, if a man is really like very very mean, he he there are those uh, uh, people who like like who are very negative or whatever. Just kill him with niceness. Just be nice. Be humble. At the end, uh, they will. Uh, they will change to the goodness of love. Well, sometimes if somebody's bad and also you become bad, there's nobody gonna help the other one. Then, you know, it will become more worse. Um, for me, I believe where when a, a man or like a man treats the wife really good, everything will go so well. But uh, and also when the woman treats the husband really good, everything will go so well. But when partner, when one partner is mean to the other, is when like things become tough. But as us now, as children of God, we have to find a way uh, to calm these men or women down. You know, like by using the way the Bible, like we are being taught from the Bible, goes uh, like the way I just read here, like evil, you can't pay evil with evil. You know, you if somebody does for you evil, bless them with something. So at the end, I think that will can, can help sort of like most, issues is unfortunate is our African culture most of our African men they do not really like face their wives to tell them oh oh honey I love you oh honey this or whatever whatever uh, uh, or maybe some as Baba say they can text but when they see somebody they cannot really their wife they cannot say to their face I don't know maybe if it's a cultural thing and some are like you're supposed to know like they love you by actions. In other words, if they are buying stuff in the house, they are working and providing, you're supposed to know like they love you that way. Uh, I don't know if it's a cultural thing, but the thing is most of you here have really like grew up in like uh, different kind of families. You have way, way experience in uh, marriage stuff even way, way, way more than me. Even I should not comment anything here because I've never been in a polygamous family. Never. I basically grew up in a boarding school. I'm still like learning now. I just want the Holy Spirit to guide me through. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Well, unless someone says something, but I will try to point out something. The best marriage anyone can ever have is when it's based on the Bible, meaning what the Bible says. Because I, I see Sister Flora, do you want to say something? Praise God. Yeah. Okay. No. Okay, thank you. So by the help of the Spirit of God, I will explain what is on really on the ground. With a little experience, even though yet I'm not married, but in the spirit, God will help me to speak like a married man and it will help someone. Praise God. I'll say this, that many a times the problem we have 
as men, in nowadays is totally different from old days. Nowadays, old days, it was like when you become about to become a man, your uncle or elder person in the family could take you somewhere and lecture you how you treat a man, a woman, how you handle things. And you see such men who went such kind of classes, the way they treat their wife is totally different. But now we are in the land, life whereby even parents, they don't have time to teach their sons or your, their daughters. That is one of the big problems we are having. So it has come to an extent whereby everybody learns on the way as he goes. They are those who learn through internet, and that is where the problem is. Not everybody learns from internet, you learn the right thing. People like us to have what to say, which is the right way, is because we learn from the Bible. And that is the best source of anyone can use for anything. The Bible here stated by saying, he said, I wish, I hope my, your husband or your men could listen to this. He said, husband in the same way, be considerant as live with your wives. The word same way, it means the way we talked about women, we want them to live, is the same way men, we have to live. I repeat again. When he said the same way, it means God is expecting you as a woman, the way you treat me as your husband is the way I treat you as my wife. Praise God. So I will say to you, my sister that listened to me, of which I pray, I'll download this, I'll post it when you have it, play it in your house, whether your husband pretend. You know many black men like to pretend. By the way, you know many pretend. That's why you see many, I, I really feel sorry for African women. They are very, very rare men who can tell you, honey, I love you. It does not come from their mouth. So they show it by either gifts or their attention. Of which I pray in the future, if I will ever have a chance, we'll have to lecture our men to teach them how to treat men, women. Praise God. Why? There are classes people need to help each other and sit and learn. It will help to have a peaceful home. Why? Many a times, if you hear it says same way, it means that the way I think to dress well in the outside, I should think of dressing well in the inner man. Let my heart be full of kindness. The kindness I show to the people on the street, let that kindness start with my wife in the home. Many men I have seen them. They can easily tell a woman outside you are looking beautiful, but he can leave his own wife and don't tell her she's beautiful. What a big mistake. And I do believe as a married woman, when you dress well, you expect your husband to say, sweetheart, you are really looking so beautiful. You expect that first from him. But a man can let a wife, no matter how she have tried to spend time in the bathroom, taking care of herself, she leave the house and go. Someone else on the street to tell her you are beautiful, but him, he cannot tell the wife you are beautiful, but he can tell someone else, wife, you are beautiful. Why? Many men, to be open, they are very shy. If we have a man, okay, we have. I know men, they are very shy. Just like I said earlier on, not every man can easily approach. If we count men, who are married to their wife that they approached by themselves. You will count them by finger. Many of them, I repeat, the wife they have, it was either from mother, through friend, or through sister. They connected them. Why? There is that kind of, let me say, to be shy to approach their wife. So here the Bible says, the same way, which means he's expecting the same thing the woman does to be the same. He said, to be considerate. It means when you look at this statement, it shows 
there is a sense of need of help to an essence whereby as a man should always consider himself as a stronger vessel. Why? When God created Adam, Adam lived for some time without Eve. He was the one in charge of that garden of Eden without Eve. So Eve came in as a helper. So as a man must always remember, no matter how your wife she's educated, no matter how she may be wealthy, she's always need to be cons okay, let me say, to give to be given a room, a chance to correct herself. I'll tell you a scripture, but you may not like, I'll tell you after, after. Praise God. The Bible says to us that outside, out of a thousand men, you'll find one that understands. But out of a thousand women, no one understands. No matter how, uh, women, don't be offended. I'm your sister. If you get offended, you, how can you get offended to your brother? I'm your brother. Praise God. So I talk to you like a brother, not like a pastor, as your brother. Because many of you, your brother may not tell you this. Why? Maybe you are elder than, older than them. You are educated. Okay, me, you may be educated, but I will tell you now. This is the Bible tells us that when you see that, to say consider it, it means that no matter how smart a woman will be, she still needs some kind of help, some kind of support. Praise God from our partner. But the problem we have many a time is that many men, mostly, they expect you because you are his wife, he expects you to be perfect in everything. He forget himself is not perfect. Praise God. So I would say to us that for this reason, we need to, as men, sorry they are not there, but I know they will listen. If they will not be here, I will visit them in their dream. They will tell you, I see this man in my dream. Who is this? When he described he just enjoyed a dream, is Ibrahim. God will make me visit your husband in their dream and I will preach to them. Praise God in Jesus' name. So be ready to your wife to ask you, your husband to ask you this. So listen what he said, that as you live with your wives, treat them with the respect as the weaker partner and as with your, let me say this, Many men, there are very few who really respect their wife. And most especially, this is what I really, I don't really understand. Whether you paid enough for your wife to come, it does not make her your slave. Whether you are the one who paid her school fees, whether you were given this wife when she was still young, whether you bought her from a family which was poor does not qualify her to become your slave. Respect her as a man. Also a woman, whether you are the one in charge of many bills in the home, respect your husband. One of the problems that come in a relationship is lack of respect. And how does this happen? When one party shows a lot of love, the other part lose control and start disrespecting and misuse that privilege. And it's what leads people to adopt some behavior. So here he say, women will consider you as weaker vessels. We consider you as children. I love to talk to people, I tell them, you know when a, woman, a man call you baby, they don't know, uh, I think I was, the couple. Then they had the issue. Then I say, ah, don't complain. You are the one who call her baby. What do you expect from a baby? She will listen like a baby. You call her baby. She will behave like a baby. So if she's a baby, you have to give her milk to drink and teach her to eat salty food. You have to teach her to walk. No matter how educated she is, that's where many men, they don't understand. 
Sorry, men, happy doesn't. So I'll say this. If we take time as men and learn our women, knowing that Ash is weak in this area, some of you women, you are brought up in a very funny way. Some of you, your parents are very nice women, parents, but you adopt some funny behaviors from internet or from the countries where you are. You want to treat a man the way the white people treat them. And that is what is bringing problems. So here the Bible is saying that a man should always remember that a woman has a weaker. You know, somebody weak, it means it cannot do things by yourself. Need a support. Praise God. That's why you see, don't be offended. You know I love you. I really love you, all of you. I said this. Satan knew if he had come through Adam, he would have not succeeded. So he used the weak vessel, which was Eve. Why? Women like trying, like to find out. And finding out and trying, they mess. That's Eve wanted to try and wanted to find out something new. And that is mostly the women. They like finding out. So if we understand they like finding out, we have to be patient with them. When they make a mistake, we try to find a way to correct those mistakes in the Lord. Which means, if I know you are a weak vessel as a man, I have to be ready to forgive you every time, which is not really easy for every man to bear. Why? A man can, because a man cannot easily bear that why, is that wherever you people have issue, you call a friend and explain what is happening in the marriage. Then the friend with his dirty mind, it will, it will put poison in your husband. He says, she did that? No, treat her like this. Then that man who was good, he will try to treat you based on the advice from a friend. But I pray to God that when there is a problem between couples, a man should come back to the Bible and ask for advice. So my prayer that men should always remember that women are weaker vessels. Emotionally, the way you go far, I know this, women. Praise God. But you are very beautiful and you are really helpful. Why? Abraham, Adam, when he was one, God said, I have to find somebody to help him, a helper. So you are a helper in that man's life. So I will say this to many men, which I know they are shy. Being that they cannot approach their wife and tell them love, I tell to them, whoever listen to my voice, learn to tell your wife you love them. When she cook food, tell her, thank you for cooking. When even she's in the house, you are in the house, you came back earlier before her. She come back from work or anywhere. Try to tell her, welcome back, my, my wife. Such few, few words make the love relationship sweet. But our African men, I thank God I'm an African man. You can come from work, he see like he did not see you. And he's expecting you to go to kitchen and prepare for him. We are not in Africa. We are children of heaven. We have to be like Jesus. When you see here, he said something. He said that. Gracious gift of life. So that nothing will hinder your prayers. Why? He says something, which means that if you, a man and woman, there is some disagreement, you cannot pray. What are you praying to God when your wife, she's not happy? You said something, and your conscience is disturbing that this woman, she's not happy. Reach out to her. By the way, I pray God give men a loving heart. To have a wife is a blessing. Praise God. Why? What does it cost me to wake up and say, I'm really sorry. I did not mean it. And I say it not just joking. I mean it. I believe no matter how you say, you don't want to see this man, you say, ah, he humble himself. Then we hug each other and we put that aside. 
But many a times men don't care. Whether he say, I don't care whether she thinks, and that is what is destroying home. And there is something men many a times forget. Bible says, blessed is the one who find a wife. Who you find a wife, find a good thing and obtain favor. It means when a man and woman, they are together, there is a blessing that is upon both of them. You carry 100, I carry 100. There are 200 blessings. So when we are cooperating, we are enjoying 200. But we are not operating. It means it does not come 100. That's why you see disappointment, failure, sickness in home. Why? There is no peace in your homes. So I pray to men to reconsider. And also I pray to women, always remember you are a weaker vessel. You need that man. He needs you. Don't say I don't care. You may not care at the moment, but in the future you will care when you are an old woman or an old man. So, he made us understand that when we live in peacefully, our prayers will not be hindered. Listen, I'll say this. Do you know that it's so powerful when a husband and wife kneel down and pray over a particular matter in agreement? Something wonderful happens. I have seen people with severe, in severe poverty, but because of the agreement they have between them in couples, things happen. I pray that God give your husband a heart that prays with you. It doesn't matter whether he's a Christian, but one day you will pray together. Listen, finally, all of you, Live in the harmony with one another. Be sympathetic. sympathetic. Love us, brothers. Be compassionate and humble. This lies to both men and women. No one wants to be humble in the marriage. You love fight. Everyone wants to prove you are English. Can't work that way. We both must be humble. My sisters, try as you can, humble yourself. You are a woman. Don't raise your shoulder. Don't prove you are right. Same a man, try to humble yourself. What does it cost yourself to humble yourself before your wife? Here the Bible says humble, which means most of the marriages struggle come from not being humble. A man wants to prove that he's a man in the house. And a wife wants to prove that she's a wife in the house. Why? Friends advise you people wrongly. Sisters advise you wrongly. They will say, why do you let that man control you? Why don't you let that wife control you? I tell you the truth. When you listen to such, you will start disrespecting this man. And you'll have problems. If you have done wrong as a sister, what does it take you to say to your husband, please, I'm really sorry. If it means to kneel down for him, kneel down. You want it to work. I know many men cannot do that. But when they listen to this, I tell to them, try to fight for your marriage. Try to be humble. Whether you are the one very educated, I want to let you know, many educated women and educated men, they are struggling with loneliness, depression. They have children, but they don't have mother. They have mother, they have children, but they don't have husband. Why? Pride. You say, I can do things, but yes, you can do things by yourself, but the children, when they grow without their father, there will be always something missing in them. Or when they grow without their mother. So I pray that this mentality of saying that I can live alone with my children, did you have bear them by yourself? No. This man was there. This woman was there. So... 
I pray that let there be that sense of humility. Why? Our Lord Jesus Christ is a humble man, if I call him a man. We sons and daughter, we have to be humble. I don't know where you people get this pride from because Jesus is not a proud man, if I should call him a proud. Pride is Satan. You cannot be told, you cannot be advised. You claim your rights. When you have an issue in your home, the first person you call is your mother. Then, did this man marry you, married you and your mother? Or did this woman get married to you and your to you with your with your parents, your friend? No. When you married this man, or when you got married to them, you are two of you. And that is the reason why we call you have bed. You only sleep two of you. Why do you include outsiders? They have failed to control their hopes. They go to them to advise. What will they tell you? They will tell you every man is like that. Don't respect men. Don't honor. No. My Bible tells me, wife, submit to your husband. Husband, love your wife. The word loving the wife, it means, with all her mistake and weakness, love her. No matter how bad that woman may be, there are some good quality that she has that no other woman has. She's a special thing. So love her for who she is. For you to take a cell whereby you let her undress and sleep and sleep with you, it shows the trust you have with you, you to humble her. So she's not your slave, that you will treat her because you are paying. No, stop it as a man. It is, will be accounted to go, you. God will ask you question. I gave you my daughter. How did you treat her? What will you tell God? So I say to every man, learn to love your wife. The way you go outside and look for a young one, who made this one old? You are the one. One. You don't take care of her. You don't take her for shopping. You don't make her buy makeups. But you look around for other girls who can take care of your hair. But if you want a woman with long hair, buy your woman weave. If you want short clothes, buy your woman short clothes. Let her put on. You admire with the good people with the lipstick. Take your woman and buy her lipstick. Carry her along. You don't take care of her. You are busy looking outside. God will ask you. Unless you are not a born again. I thank God I'm saying this. I'm playing my role. So I say to us, if we only desire this, this is how I like my woman to look. I will do all effort. If she doesn't like to spend time in a mirror, I will use wisdom and say, honey, you know what? Come. Here is a mirror. I make her sit on the mirror. She spends time while I'm there talking, making fun, but she doesn't know she's taking care of Afterwards, I say, yes, you look good. You can go outside. When I assure that, when you let your wife look beautiful, there will be no reason for you to look for another woman outside. If she's becoming fat the way you don't want, Make her go up some once in a week, exercise you both, walk long distance, park the car, both of you, to look attractive. There are just minor, minor things that we ignore, which can keep the marriage safe and sweet. As newly born baby, it means that let us go back, take our marriages back as we started. Pride. Is destroying marriage. The man say yes, you also say yes, you say no. You fight and you scatter the marriage. Children don't have their father, they don't have their mother. And after that, you don't want the children to see their father, you don't want the children to see their mother, as if you are the only one who born them. Christian, I don't know which Bible you read. You say you don't like the man, but you don't want him to see the children. So I always say to us, my beloved, we can still work, make it work, even if it did not work out for you, and you really feel you don't like this man. I know you don't really like this man back for reason. The pain he has caused you. Some of you, I call you champion. God has given you grace. You have really endured a lot. I know how, you know, 
I spend most of the time visiting villages. And I know how village men used to treat their wives. This woman go to the garden, she work. Both of them, they go garden. But the woman will carry firewood. A man will be walking. A woman carry firewood, carry everything. The man will be walking. This very woman will come and put firewood. He go carry water. The man is seated. That is not the Bible. Because here my Bible makes me understand. He said something. He said that. See, he said that. Live in, live in harmony with one another. Love, like let me say, sympathetic. Love us brothers. Be compassion and humble. Which means, compassion is like, I said this. Let me have that sympathy. I believe I'm tired. She's also tired. But at the same time, this woman, she have worked every day. Before you know, you want to sleep with her. It's not normal. That is, that is, not, that is not love. You are after satisfying yourself. If let's say, woman, please allow me this. I'm your brother. I'm your brother. This woman worked two hours, two jobs at work. You are sleeping in the house. Then you're expecting her to come and cook for you. You cannot cook. If you cannot cook, get a maid to cook. Okay. You're expecting him, as, tired, as, as woman as tired she is. Afterwards, you say, honey, you even, you know, men, uh, God forgive me. Please allow me this to say this. You want to sleep with her. She's very tired. You don't want to know whether the work was okay. All you want is to sleep with her. That is not good at all. Many women of you, I know, you, have been, you are in a torment. You are very tired, but because you are a wife, you have to fulfill what you want. No, men, wake up. That African mentality, put it in back in Africa. Let this woman come back home. Welcome her. Let her have some rest. Let her take bath. Try to see that she have comfort. Let you find out how the job work it was. Let her feel like she have somebody on her side. Then at the right time after she have rested, if you go to her, she will make you happy. I hope men you listen to this. It is not one-sided. Try to think over this. You are tired. You come from work. Then wife tells you you want to do. You cannot do anything. You will be grumbling. So I pray men, wake up. Let her come take good care of her. Let her rest. If it's possible, let her go and sleep. Then after when she's wake up, visit her in the bed. She will give you good time. Why? She's rested. I hope you will clap for Jesus. Thank you. So I hope my brothers, you wake up. She's not a toy. She's not a machine, even a car. When the car works many, many hours, he needs service. He needs rest. He needs to change oil. He needs to check the engine. So is your wife too. If she say not today, I'm not ready. Try to find out why she's not ready in a good way. Let that not become a quarrel. One of the things that kills affection in marriage is this. God forgive, God allow me to say this. I'm your brothers. If every time you go and sleep with this woman, she's not ready for that. She will get, even she will be worried whenever she think of it because you just torture her. Why? She's not ready. You are forcing to sleep with her. You are going to hurt her. She may not say it because she's a woman. After you have slept with her, she will be using hot water on herself to heal herself wound. What do you think next time? She will be even worried of you. Why? You do things when you are not ready. Men, wake up. <laughs> Praise God. I hope your men will listen. Please, try to learn to prepare one another so that you can have good fun. Whereby even when... If you let her have good time, it means that when it is a time for you to go with her in bed, she's excited. She's waiting for you because why? She's not hurt. She enjoys what you people do. 
I don't know if pastor may really tell you this because, but I will tell you because it's a process of us to save our marriage. Things we ignore that the one affect you. Even if you people, you had time to be in bed, try to find out a man. Do, do you really, your wife enjoy what you spend time with her? It is a very important thing. No. Honey, do you, do you really like me spending time? Did you really? You don't even find out after you finish, you just wake, you sleep, you, you sleep and you sleep. After you sleep, you wake up, go up. You don't care. Many of you men, you are hurting your wives. Why? God permit me to say this. And my sister, bear with me. You come and make love to this woman. She was not ready. She was not prepared. You do not satisfy her. You leave her in pain. You wake up, you go to work. She's crying, saying, which kind of man is this? You don't even bother to know. She will be crying all day. Why? She's just managing marriage. Those who are under my influence, I don't want marriage to be managed. I want people to enjoy their marriage. Take a step after you have slept with your wife. Try to, before you sleep with her, find out if she's really ready for that. If she's not ready, give it a time. It's not about just sex. No. Try the time you spend talking to her, the time you spend holding her, the time you spend appreciating her is more than even having sex with her. But many men think it's just sex. It's not sex that will keep your marriage, it's how you treat your wife. The way you treat her, the way you value her, it means a lot more than sex. Sex is just a bonus. Men, wake up. Learn to be romantic because Jesus loves you. Be compassionate. Feel. How do you feel? Does she really love what I'm going to do? If she's not interested, it's not a forcing matter. Leave her. Let there be a time. Something else, I tell you, women are very weak. God forgive me. If you are spending time with your wife, having good time, she will easily serve you and both of you will enjoy each other. Tell me, why, where will the enemy come from? No, she's satisfied, you are satisfied. Praise God. I believe somebody will pick something. I'll tell you this until we save our marriages. Because you know, when we grew up, they used to teach us, I did not have such lectures, but by the help of the spirit, I'll say this, it's very good for each other to know whether what you are doing is somebody else like what you are doing. If it doesn't like, try to find out what to do that fit both of you, not only you, not only that benefit you. That's why you see we mistake love. Praise God. I know women, when you treat them well, to show you appreciation, they will want to take you to bed, you to take them to bed as appreciation. So also men, treat your wife well, they will appreciate you in bed. God bless you. It's biblical. Don't deprive one another. You hear they are complaining about sleeping together. Why? One of you have a problem in the way you do things. I hear some people rape their wife. Why you rape your wife? Don't force them. Praise God. Okay. I bring you this. It's a, <laughs> God bless you, my sisters and brothers. I believe, men, you'll wake up. Stop being a, a, a typical African man. Be heavenly man. So he said, love as a brother. Loving as a brother is that. A brother and sister they may disagree, but they will always have this that she's my sister. So we will always give her a room to correct herself. A brother and a sister, they can easily point out their mistake to one another. Praise God. So I'll say to us, the Bible tells us that that's like brother and sister. So what is that expected of you as a sister or a brother? Be there for your, your sister. Try to accept her the way she is. Don't expect her to be always correct. You know, when we are still children, as family, we do a lot of mistakes. 
So when the Bible refers a brother and sister, it means there are many mistakes that brothers many a times commit does. So they always forgive one another. That's why you see, no matter what happened between brother and sister, they will never be separated. A sister, they may disagree with a brother, but this sister, she will always speak good of her brother. The same, the brother may disagree with a sister, but when it comes on the behalf of her brother, she will do all it takes to speak on the behalf of her brother. So, not just being a husband and wife, but be a sister and brother. Praise God. I will say to us, my beautiful sister, that God with the East Infinity. Uh, just a second. I'll say this, that God with his infinity mercy, he will never stop taking care of his children. And he's really proud of you. He will always work so hard to see that you live in peace and harmony with your partner. It gives God's glory when couples, they love, they live truly, they take care of one another. Praise be to God. So I'll say to us, my sweet sisters and brother, that is a thing of God and it give him glory wherever you people live in the life of agreeing to one another. Listen, he went further and said something. Do not repair evil with evil insult with insult, but blessing, because to this you are called so that you are many, may inherit a blessing. When it comes, both marriage and even in our lifestyle, if I do you wrong, don't pay me by doing wrong. As a truly born again Christian, we ought to follow the footprint steps of our Lord Jesus Christ. When they revealed him, he humbled himself. So it's the same. When they, someone does you, well, you know, I have really loved this love, life of Christianity, Jesus' life. It is sweet me when I see you show respect to people and they disrespect you. There is a reward. When you show respect to people who disrespect you, God reward you. Praise God. So it is my prayer, beloved. When people do you evil, show you evil heart, wickedness, be there for them, help them. I bring it in the marriage. Many men, I know they mistreat their wives. And most especially if you have been married for many years. I don't know why it is this, but I know it's Satan. Many men have this tendency when they stay so much in marriage for long, they start thinking outside, not considering their wife. But this is a result because this marriage is not built on the Lord. They are not maybe God-fearing. That's why you see it is very good a marriage to be on the rock, Jesus. Because Jesus will always remind that man, love your wife. As I love the church. Whether he like it or not, he will love you. I have realized the time I've spent in Asia, they have really made me love more being a husband one day. I see 120, 130 years old people, couple, they still walk together. They still go and sit in the park. 
they sit and look at each other like birds. Husband and wife, 130. The other one is 125. They made up decision to grow old together. It doesn't mean that there were no time they did not agree. But because they decided to say, you know what? We'll grow old together. I look forward to have such kind of couples in our midst. In our midst, you find out that even your husband cannot sit next to you to listen to God's word. Maybe time difference and work. Maybe when you are seated here, it's going to work. It's understandable. But once in a while, as husband and wife need to sit together, it is very important. And I believe this one will work out where you start sitting with your husband. So I'll say this to us. People you see, they lo stay long in marriage. It does not mean that their life was always perfect. There were time and season. They disagreed, but they always forgive one another. Why? They understand that the other is weaker and they understand no one is perfect. But the problem many a times people have, we always think we can change other people. If yourself, you cannot change. How can you be able to change the other? It's a matter of you to accept people as they are. And them also to accept you the way you are. If we understand this problem, will be very less. And one of the things that it doesn't matter whether you come from the same country or from the same background, the heart are not really the same. So there will be some differences. So we should accept each other with those differences. Why? If the Bible says that we should not repay each other evil for evil, it means there will be a mistake. But if a mistake come, forgive. But many a times I have realized when it comes to relationship, the man say, I am going to Uganda. The woman say, I'm going to Kenya. How will this work? It cannot work. Why don't you agree one day and say, okay, let us, okay, you want to travel. Okay, let us find one day. Let us both of us go to Uganda. And afterwards we can go to Kenya. That is what I think. Praise God. That's why, you see, I will even say that couples, I will pray that you start eating in the same plate. Praise God. Because you sleep in the same bed. But the problem is, even some of you, the bed are separated. But I'm praying for that. Those two beds, one bed you give it to children, and you have one bed in the house. So don't pay what he does wrong to you, or inside, don't insult him back. If he proved to be right, be quiet. Consider yourself, let him just, just like Christ. So I come to this, he says, because to this, we, you are called so that you may inherit a blessing. You will only be blessed if you are somebody who bless when others curse you. You will only be blessed when you pay evil by doing good. That's what he called Christianity. So I will say to us, highly beloved, for however we love life, whoever will love life and see good days must keep his tongue from evil and his lips from his deceitful speech. What does that man mean? If you want to live a good life, if you want to live a life with God, a life with peace, Mind what come out of your mouth. Does it bless? Because he say here that you must keep, must keep his tongue from evil and his lip from deceitful speech. The words that come out of my mouth is 
as a result of what you'll, you'll eat. Many a times people will speak to, I'm gonna spend time talking to them. I will always advise them. I tell them that you can't be pronouncing failure and you expect a blessing. You cannot. We are most of the, as a product of what we have said earlier some days. If you only confess pain, you live in pain. It's like when you wake up and say, I hate you. Indeed, if you say you don't, you will hate that person one day. That's why you see, we choose to say, I love you. I know you don't love me, I love you. Why? Love. The way you speak, it works. So he said to us, means that if you are to enjoy good days, your words matters. Do you speak blessing? Do you confess healing? Many of you people I have seen, you come and say, pastor, pray for me. We pray. After you pray, in your, you encounter a challenge, you start complaining. That complaint will fire your prayer. Okay, I'll end by 11 saying, he must turn from evil and do good. He must seek peace and pursue it. So you stop evil, pursue peace, seek peace between you people as couple, between relatives, between workmen, let the peace reign. Pursue it, it means it may be, it may cost you to reunite. It may cost you to have the same understanding, but go for it. Because when you have it, you will enjoy it. Praise God. For the eyes of the Lord, listen, are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to the prayer, to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. If you want God's ears to be open to your prayer, try to be righteous in things you do. Because his ears are open to the righteous. And his eyes are on those, his children. And his ears, if God's ears are open to a righteous man, what does that mean? When you pray, God will answer you. So I'll say this, but the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. So if you are somebody who is doing evil, means mistreat your husband, mistreat your children, mistreat your wife, it's evil. God's eyes will be against you. I'll stop there and say, may God bless his word. If anyone has something to say, please, you are welcome. God bless you. Thank you. Let us hear. Someone, please. Anyone? Anyone? As we wait someone to say, maybe Sister Tina will sing us a song. Sorry, please. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Bless the Lord, Oh, my soul, and all that is within me, 
Bless his holy, holy name. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. And all. That is within me, bless his holy, holy name, bless the Lord, bless the Lord, oh my soul, bless the Lord, bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy, holy name. He has done great things, he has done great things, hallelujah, he has done Great things, hallelujah, he has done great things, bless his holy, holy name, he has done great things, he has done great things, hallelujah, he has done great things, hallelujah, he has done great things, bless his holy, holy name, he has done great things, for he has done great things. Hallelujah. He has done great things. Hallelujah. He has done great things. Bless his holy, holy name. Hallelujah. Indeed, he has done great things. Blessed be his holy name. Yeah, we bless God. He has done great things. Thank you, sister. God bless you mightily. Yeah, please, anyone, based on what God have used me to say, if someone has something to say, please feel free. Your contribution is important. We see how we can find out what God have, used, have said, convict, because there's always conviction. What is God saying to you? Praise the Lord, Baba, and praise the Hallelujah. Lord, everyone. I just want to say thank you so much for the enlightenment, and God bless you that uh, you have allowed yourself to be used to be an eye-opener unto us as far as marriage is concerned. You have made it uh, you have made marriage like so like appetizing. You've made it very, very nice. And I pray that those of us who have been listening to you and learning from you, God will grant us the grace. I see most of us here are women. 
he will grant us the grace and the wisdom to apply all these in our marriages so that those of us whose men are, are not like Bible oriented or Holy Spirit filled by reason of us being able to put in practice all that we have learned from you as written in the Bible, we'll be able to win them over and they will begin to learn from us and have a change of heart, change of attitude, and of course, change of personality as far as they being husband is concerned and our marriages are also concerned. And I also pray that those who are yet to marry, God gives them the right, for, the, the right partners, God fearing, God loving men and women, because it all boils down to love. You love your partner, there is no way you do anything to displease him or her, let alone hurt his or her feelings. So God richly bless you. And again, rather on a sad note, uh, I'm not supposed to say it, but I will say it because life happens. For some of us, if I should say personally, some of these things, I should say, are rather late for me to apply because one way or the other, it will not work for me. Not that it's only in my case. So I pray that through it all, God will grant us the grace uh, to do the right thing that pleases him. Amen. Yeah, thank you, sister. Anyone else? Thank you, sister. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you so much because what we do is what we have experienced. We try not to let our children, which means as a person, if you have a daughter, you when they reach let's say in the age of 18 or 17 coming to eight, you try to lecture the girl, it help her. If it's a son, you try also to lecture him. You know, you may not really mean no, but when you, a parent, sit down and talk such things to a child, it will change the way she or he think about the other partner. But if we just let our children, thank you, Jesus. Allow me, I said, because I was trying to call for electricity. Sister Tina, please continue singing for me as I arrange, please. Glory be to God in the highest. Hallelujah. We say glory be to God in the highest, hallelujah. Everybody shout hallelujah, hallelujah. Shout hallelujah, hallelujah. Everybody shout hallelujah, hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah for his goodness, hallelujah for his kindness, hallelujah for his mercy, hallelujah, hallelujah. We say glory be to God in the highest. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lord in the highest. Hallelujah. Everybody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody shout hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, for his mercy is hallelujah. For his kindness. Hallelujah. Oh, for his goodness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. Well, 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 thank you. Yeah, I was, when I was arranging, the Spirit of God reminded me to remind you, my sister, Tina. This is not, don't say you, as far as it concerns you are not, but it will not work for you. He made me, he reminded me of something. He have called me for difficult matters. Based on your situation, you don't see like there is hope. But I want to say this, as God, as lives, God lives, and if I really be, be, be One day, you will testify. This is what just it made me understand, I should tell you. Because you know, as a person, you look at what it is, the life, how it look like. As a human, you feel like there's no hope. The Lord reminded me of Sarah. Sarah womb was barren. Elizabeth womb, she was barren. Anne was no hope. But God came in. And we know what really happened. You know it very well. So in other words, the Lord is saying to you, just be still and know that is God. Yours will be such a testimony if you wake up and testify. Everybody will be so happy and say, ah, it's really who God did it. Well, we thank God. So, sister, I can't wait. I tell you, I can't wait. Every word God has ever used me to say, it made me understand I will only say what I will live to see it happen. Thank you, Jesus. So I will say this. Thank you for singing. I would love if somebody would love to say something based on what we have just read. I'm not so much, much in, I don't so much like, let's say, we call many verses, then without hearing people's, how people, they, these words mean to them. My word is that for those who have children, or you have sisters, or you have brothers, once in a while, if you have time, try to lecture them. 
about those words or things, or, um, conversation topics that cannot easily, people call it shameful, but it's not shameful. It will help them. Praise God. Anyone? Praise God. Praise God. I see silence. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. I would love us to do this because I love this. When I see people silent, it means we are together. I'll continue if it is okay. Praise be to God. I'll continue to read like two verses, then we can put full stop to it. I'll say this, listen, verse, chapter three, verse 13 of First Peter. Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. What does that mean? It means that if you are doing good, obeying the scriptures, trying your best to be obedient to the voice of God, Jesus is asking, who will harm you? For all we know that if God be for us, who will be against us? No one. So I'll say, when you do good, it's for your own safety. When you do good, it means that God with his infinity mercy, his eyes, the Bible makes us to understand, they are always on you to protect you, to guide you, that you may not be harmed. But if you are doing bad and you suffer, you are likely to be punished. It means it's as a result of what you have labored. If you are labor for bad, you receive bad. So I'll say to us, you know the Bible makes us understand in Romans 8, verse 31. He said, what then shall we say in the response to this? If God, be, if God is for us, who be against us? Nobody. If God be for you, a, a righteous woman, no one will be against you. They will try to fight you. They will try to frustrate you. But the truth remains, whether they like it or not, they will not succeed. Praise God. So I pray that you don't give up on doing good. He said, but even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. It means that. There will be time and season. Many of you, as I know, you are doing right. If I fight in the marriage area, you are such a woman, humble, try your best, kept yourself. You are such a man, kept yourself, but you are, you know, even sometimes men, I don't know why is it like that. Many a times, a good man can be tortured with a, a woman. And a good woman can be tortured with a man. Satan is too bad. So the Bible says, even if you suffer, example, you are at a workplace. Because you being a Christian, you find out that you find that you are being persecuted. You are being accused wrongly just to find fault like what they did to our master Jesus. He did not have fault, but this human being, the priests and the church elders, they try to accuse him wrongly. Why? It's something that Satan always loved to do, to find a way to frustrate a child of God. Why? He knows very well, through frustration, you will focus on the, the, what is troubling you, and you will not have time to pray. But this is the key. Wherever you are being accused wrongly, or you are suffering as you are being led to suffer of what even you have not done, 
count it joy because the promotion is away. There is a blessing when you are suffering wrong. You are suffering for something you did not do. God will promote you and bless you. Praise God. I'll give the example. Ask David, ask uh, Joseph will tell you. His brother took him to a saint whereby uh, put on to be sold as a slave. He suffered all that. But you see, at the end of the day, what his brother meant for wrong, God done it for his own good, where he ended up being their savior. Praise God. So I want you to know this, that whatever you are going through, as a result of being a Christian, just know there is a blessing. Those who are fighting you, it's God they are fighting. Do not fear what they fear. Do not be threatened. Do not fear what they fear, what it means. Example. Everyone now at the moment, they are afraid of COVID. As a Christian, I say, don't be scared. It will not kill you. I know you may tell me how many Christians die. Yeah, that is, was the will of God, I believe, for them. But you who are listening to me, it will not kill you. There are many things that make many afraid. They are afraid of the terror at the night. They are afraid of sudden death. They are afraid of what men may expose them to. Here the Bible says, do not fear what they fear. Don't. We say it's God. Don't be frightened. But in your hearts, set apart Christ as Lord always. Be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. He make us understand. It means that there will always be men who will come to ask you to give them reason why you believe in Jesus, why you put your, set your hope in him. So you can only be able to answer them if you are somebody who read your Bible and obey. So that by the words that come from your heart through your mouth, when you speak to them, they will find a really reason why you have hope in Christ. Every living man or woman, they are scared or they are afraid of death. I'll tell you I'm one of two, I'm not scared to die. Why? I do believe by Christ, by the help of God, if I die, I go to heaven. And in heaven, there is no trouble. There is enjoyment in heaven. But for those who are not in Christ Jesus, they are scared to die because they don't know what will happen to them. Praise God. So when people come and ask you, you have to be ready to tell them who Jesus is to you, what he has done, who he is, where he came from, where he is, and what about his future. So you have to be ready to tell them Jesus is the son of God who came and died for our sins, all of us. He was crucified, third day he rose. Now he lives, he went back to heaven, seated on the right hand of the father, coming back to take us back home. So you have to be ready to say this. You have to be ready to tell them that he's Lord. And you cannot just tell them he's Lord. They would like you to show them if Jesus is Lord, show us. How do you show that Christ is Lord? If Jesus Christ be our Lord and personal Savior, we will obey him. We will keep his teaching. We will practice his word. How? By loving one another, being patient, considering, supporting one another. Praise God. So it is my prayer that you be in such a position Whoever come to ask you of your hope, you are able to explain. By the help of the spirit of God that dwells inside you and I, will be able to answer. For Jesus said, do not worry or plan on what to say. 
because on that very time, what you say, it will be given unto you. He said, it will not be you speaking, but the spirit of your father that dwells continuous in us, it will be answered. Praise God. That's why you see, I can give you an example. When you see example, I have a privilege to sit and teach. If you ask me, do I plan to say, no, I don't plan. But once I make myself seated here, I just find what's come. And the truth is that this is why you see, when we finish, I sit and listen to myself while I was preaching. Then I say, ah, how did I say this? Why? When I sit to teach, the spirit of God speak through me, even I don't know. Praise God. So you don't need to worry what to say. That's why you see, we always have this, what we call divine nature and us. That's why you see we have Ibrahim and Ibrahim the divine nature. So divine nature, Ibrahim is the one speaking to you. Praise God. Listen, he went further and said, says that but do this with gentleness, respect. What does that mean? When we have brothers and sisters that do not believe or have the same faith as us, they like to come and ask questions. But please try as you can. Don't argue. Don't turn it to insult. Don't let it not be an argument. Try to be gentle when you answer the opponent. Try to be gentle when you explain the word of God. Try to be calm. If you don't know anything, don't lie. Just calm down and try to keep quiet. Allow the other person to speak. Then at that very time, the word will be given to you to talk and you'll answer them in a gentle way. But many a times I have realized that when Christians have been asked some questions with the non-believers, sometimes they get provoked and they lose control. When you lose that, you have failed. Jesus was very humble. Sometimes they may even insult you while ministering to them. Don't insult them back. Just know that it's not you they are insulting, but it's Jesus they are insulting. Praise God. So, and you know what is the result when they insult Jesus? What will happen? So I'll say to us, my beloved sister and brother, that when you are gentle and respectful, try to be respectful to people. What does that mean? Respect everyone. The way you treat Mr. A, also treat Mr. B to the glory of God. So I do think by God's grace, Based on our time, we can stop here in this verse. Uh, then we will continue from verse 16. Praise God. We continue from verse 16. So I request, uh, by God's grace, we'll go to the session of prayer. Then we pray for one another. Praise God. May God bless his word in the midst of our hearts. I will love us to pray for one another. Praise God. Yeah, we love to pray for one another. Who will sing for us? We call her sister. I don't know if Sister Flora, you are there. Praise God. Okay, we take Sister Ashley. Sister Ashley, will you sing? Are you at work or you can sing for us? Ashley, come sing. Ashley, she's let us hear you sing. Getting ready for work. Oh, she's getting ready. I'll let her get ready. 
Let okay, her get ready. Actually, come on. Let her get ready for work. Baba wants to sing. Does she, but she can sing, I think. <laughs> okay. Ashley, sing us a song. Yes. Okay. You are the youngest princess in the house. Uh, I'm thinking, let me sing while you are thinking. Mungu yumema, Mungu yumema, Mungu yumema, yumema kwangu. Mungu yumema, Mungu yumema, Mungu yumema, yumema kwangu. Ngai no mwega, Ngai no mwega. Gai no mwega, no mwega. Wakwa. Wakwa. Nyasai no mia. Nyasai no mia. Nyasai no mia. No mia. One day. I mix it. Um. <laughs> I, I forget the, the 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 words also. I think I I moved from Kisi to to Luya or something. I mixed the two tribes. Okay. Uh, Upendo okay. wa yes. Okay. Fuatanya yo sake yes mo kosi ye ye ninjia sabia kwenda binguni mpesa sa maisha ya koreyo atakufikisha binguni kweli kweli atakufikisha binguni fuatanya yo sake yes mo kosi ye ye ninjia sabia kwenda binguni mpesa Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. What a beautiful voice. Indeed, when I think of going heaven, indeed, Jesus is the only way will take us to heaven. Thank you so much. May you have a good day at work. Yeah, well, thank you. We we'll love to take, um, we we'll love to pray for someone, but if there is a testimony before we pray, we we'll love to take the testimony before we pray for someone. Yeah, we see Sister Dut. I have a testimony before I say my prayer request. Yeah, I see your voice. Are you okay? Your voice is down. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, now yes. Okay. Yeah, um couple of months ago, I asked you to pray for, for Emmanuel. That time he doesn't really eat, even in the school, he eat just snack and drink juice or something like that. But at home, well, so he doesn't really eat anything. And then you prayed for him, and then we stayed a while. But now he's eating, even if he doesn't eat his lunch sometime at the school. But when he come home, he eat. And he begin to ask me for something he like. He would tell me, Mama, I like this, and I'll do it for him. So I really thank God for that. Because he was down for long time but I really thank God that now he's doing good he's eating and everything and he's getting more healthy now so that's oh, my we rejoice time. with you we rejoice with you because you will become uh, how do we call it? Uganda people call it Kanyama carry muscle I mean uh, we are happy with you God bless you thank you Jesus yeah we listen to you we can pray for you yeah, Papa, I want you to pray for my sister-in-law. I talked to her this morning. And then she said she's still suffering from um, her heart. 
she could not breathe properly and she was coughing very bad. And she told me that I went to hospital, but it didn't really work. I told her that we prayed for you last time. Because this is this uh, spirit has been going on. That's what took her father to death. The spirit of um, difficulty in breathing and coughing too much. And even my husband has the same. So when I talked to her, I just told her, don't worry. You don't have to go to hospital anymore. We're going to pray for you and everything will be well. So that's my prayer request, Baba. Thank you. Amen. Just a second. Yeah, we'll pray for her. Then you reach out to her, we pray. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus is the healer. Uh, we'll pray for her. I'll uh, sing a song. Then we pray for her. Then also we'll take our sister. So stretch your hand to me. In the name of Jesus and the fire of the Holy Ghost, I said to this sister, whatever wrong she may have committed, knowing unknowingly, be forgiven in the name of Jesus. Be forgiven in the name of Jesus. That spirit that killed our father, that spirit that torment the family, you and a clean spirit, you cannot go beyond the word of God, wherever you are, in the name of Jesus and the fire of the Holy Ghost. 
I said to you, demon, out of this body, out of this woman's life, out you demon, out you unclean spirit, your infirmity, out wherever you are, out you demon, out you demon, out with your trouble, out with your affliction, out with your disease, out with your pain, out of our liver, out of our children, out of our lungs, wherever you are, out of our blood, out, out you demon, out you unclean spirit. In the name of Jesus, I command you, out wherever you are, out you demon, out you demon, out, out, come out. Come out in the name of Jesus. Come out, you demon. Out, you unclean spirit. Ow, 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 ow. In the name of Jesus, wherever you are, I curse you out. Out of our system. Out of our body. Out in the name of Jesus. Out. In the name of Jesus, I command you, be healed of that sickness. Be healed of that disease. Ah, be healed. Be delivered. Be set free. Be released. I release you. 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 In the name of Jesus, out of that situation, I command total recover. For by strife of Jesus Christ and his wound, I declare you will. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. It is done. Please try to reach out to her. We can't, we will wait to hear your testimony from her. It is well with her. She's healed. She will not yeah. die as, yeah, as she think it is. Yeah. We wait to hear her testimony. It was God. All, I forgot to tell you to mm -hmm. pray for my husband. Because um, I want God to touch him so we can come to agreement with him by asking for something. He doesn't really agree with me that he will, he will make mm -hmm. another argument. So I just need God to touch him so he can understand when I'm talking to him. Just the spirit of the Lord remind me yeah. when you were praying so, because I forgot about it. Okay, we are praying. Then you'll be surprised what you ask him. It will be, he can put any other thing far out, fast behind. And mm -hmm. he consider. Father, in the name of Jesus, you are God that hear and answer prayer of your people. We find ourselves mainly speaking, discussing marriage. You are God who answer the prayer of your people. You say, ask and keep on asking, you will be given. Knock and keep knocking, the door will be open. Seek and keep seeking, you will find. In the name of Jesus and the fire of the Holy Ghost, I speak to your husband wherever he is. That spirit that make him to take you as a second option, I cast it out. I command him to order this very hour. Whatever you may have asked him from this very day, I command provision and it be first choice from this very day. I speak you at the first choice whenever things concerns you. They will do it in the name of Jesus. You cannot be the second choice. You are the first choice. From this very day, I declare you has head in his life. You cannot be option. I declare you as the only person he consider. That spirit of disagreement, argument, out of your home, out of his heart, out, out, 
out in the name of Jesus. I take what is troubling him out and I put the thought of you in his heart. He will love you and he will respect you and he will honor you. He will love your children and yourself now. I speak to him in the name of Jesus. That which troubles him to cease in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because it is done. In Jesus' name. Amen. We wait to hear. You will sit down and agree and come to conclusion as husband and wife. Amen. I don't know if there's somebody. Thank you. We wait to hear testimony. If there's somebody having a burning sensation in the stomach. Praise God. I see Sister Nya. Nyalo, please. We love to yeah, hear. Yeah. Yeah. Just give me one second, man. I've got it. Yeah. Sister Adut, we are waiting to hear good news from your home. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Papa. Amen. God loves you, so there's no option. Amen. I really yeah. thank thank Lord Jesus Christ. Whenever I down, He just pulled me up. Amen. Yeah, that's what God does. Those are the benefits of being a, a child of God. The lion may lack a good thing, but those who trust in God, they will always have something. Mm. Praise God. Amen. Mm. Mm. We bless your name, Almighty God. We bow before you, Lord. We bless your name, Almighty God. We bow before your we glorify your name. Lama, we glorify your name. Lama. So we take a shake, then we come to sister. Please, a shake, if you're there. Ah, yes, man of God. Agreed you Amen. all. Yes. Amen. Amen. Uh, God put me in prayer. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to move to another state, you know, but I am so tired. I'm sleeping too much. My body don't do nothing. I didn't touch anything, you know. So I want God to give me strength, you know, because I am moving to another state. You know, I'm asleep a lot. It's my yeah. Prayer. Stretch your hand, we pray for you. You will feel something leave you and you will feel strength. Amen. Immediately. After prayer, you will tell us how you feel. Okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, stretch your hand. Yes, I am. In the name of Jesus and the fire of the Holy Ghost. I said to you, be forgiven whatever you may have done, wrong knowing and knowing be forgiven. When Jesus forgives you, you get delivered. Amen. When you get delivered, you get healed. In the name of Jesus, that spirit, that spirit Start. causing weakness. Discouraging you out now. Out 
Now, oh. out of your body, I said to you, come out of our system. Come out now. Out now. Out oh. you demons. Out oh. you unclean spirit. Out wherever you are. Out. I said to you, out wherever you are, in the name of Jesus, that heaviness in your heart, ow, ow, I rebuke you, spirit. I curse you out. I curse you out. Out, come out. Out, 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 out of our Out of our out, you demon. Come out. Come out. Come out. Out completely. Out completely. Out in the name of Jesus. Out, you demon. Out wherever you are. Out, you demon. Out wherever you are. Out, you Satan. With your infirmity. Out, you demon. With your sickness. Out, you demon. With your disease. Out wherever you are. Out. Out. I release you Jesus. out of that cage. I release you out of that limitation. I release you out of that confusion. I release you out of manipulation. I release you out of domination in the name of Jesus. I speak. Receive the strength of the Lord. Receive the peace that comes from the Lord. Now, in the name of Jesus, it is done. Amen. 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 I feel Thank something you. in my heart. I don't know if you're the one. Yes, it's me. Yeah, I got my chest is so heavy. I don't know why. Okay, just wait. Hold your heart. Put your hand on your heart. Yes, I do. In the name of Jesus, <sighs> that which is sick in your heart, I command you to vomit it now. I command you to vomit it out. Out, 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 you demon. Out, out now. Out, out, out. Come out, come out, you, whatever. Not planted by God, wherever it is located. Out, 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 out in the name of Jesus. Out, out completely. Come out of you. Out. Vomit it out in the name of Jesus. You, spirit. Out, 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 out now. I said to you, wherever you are, in the system of this sister, out, 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 out of your heart. Vomit it out. Vomit it out. 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 Come out. You demon. Out. I declare it free. Out. Any substance remaining. Oh. Any substance <coughs> remaining, I command you to vomit it out. I command you to vomit it out. I command you to vomit it out. Out. If you are possible, you can work your video so that people can see what you are vomiting. Because I see you vomiting things. Yes, I am in the Poisonous car. substance. I am in the car. Oh, I I'm command you whatever it is, those poisonous substance, out now. That which is sitting in your chest. All 
out that is remaining right from your stomach, uh, wherever and whatever it entered uh, is, in uh, any way. Ow, uh, 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 in the name of Jesus. Uh, ow, uh, ow, uh, ow. Uh, Oh, put your hand on your stomach. Out in the name of Jesus. Put your hand on your stomach. It yes. must come out. It must come out. Command it out. Out. Say with me, out in the name of Jesus. Say with me, out in the name of Jesus. Out in the name of Jesus. Out in the name of Jesus. Out. 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 That poisonous substance. Out. Uh -huh. Out. Uh -huh. Out in the name of Jesus. Out. 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 Uh -huh. Out. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Out. Thank you, Out. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Out. Out. Out in the name of Jesus. I declare free in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Tell us. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, I feel better. I feel a little bit because something was sitting, my chest was sitting. I woke up this morning, my chest is so heavy, you know, and like in my throat too. But I feel better now. I feel released. Thank you, Jesus. You feel it? Okay. Yes. Did you vomit something? Yes, I vomit. Yeah. You vomit like all these things, like okra. Is that, you know. Check yourself. We wait to hear from you. Sister. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We don't hear what you say. I just say thank you, Jesus. I I feel released. I, yeah. I am. I feel light. I feel so light. Yeah, we thank God. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Lord yeah. Jesus. Yes. Once you vomit, the peace. Yes. When you vomit, you get relieved. That's what yes. Jesus can. Now you'll have strength to go and do what you're supposed to do. Amen. Yeah. Yes, for sure. Yes. Because myself, I feel my heart now is okay. So meaning you have received it. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. I shake, I, uh, sister. Oh, Nyalo. Hello. Yes. Uh, good, af good afternoon, good morning, good evening, everybody. Yeah. Uh, good yeah. evening, Papa. Uh, I'm, uh, thank God I have prayer requests and I have testimony. Uh, last uh, week on Saturday, uh, Thursday. Yeah, we are listening. Don't have, yeah, you heard that, right? You heard me? My voice is clear? Yeah. Yeah. So last week on Thursday, uh, my kid, they didn't go to school. The two, they don't have a school. The other one, she has a school. But when I go to work, like noon, around 12.40, because I started uh, work at one o'clock. She took her sister and she went to the waterfall and waterfall, it has the bridge. So somebody threw the big rock on them, but the rock fell in my other uh, daughter's foot. But thank God it didn't fall in one of them head because I have a little one. So when I come home, she was like almost 10 in the morning uh, at PM. So she showed me her food. I said, what happened? She said, oh, this and that. Yeah, they called them. They didn't call me. And that time I should call because all the time when I go to work, I check out them. But because I said, oh, they are safe at home. So nothing could happen. And I didn't know. Even my husband, he didn't call me. He, he took her to the hospital. No one called me. When I come, I was surprised. I said, okay. And I say, why you take the kid without permission? So I thank God for that because even my little one, the second day, the other one, she doesn't want to go to school. She's scared, start crying. The little one, had, she lost her voice. She was terrified. So thank God for that one. 
like thank god if if that one fall in their head even the the big one it was like it would be different but thank god for his protection over my kids because i'm worshiping the living god and my prayer request is i'm living on this saturday i'm going to sudan uh i'm waiting just for my visa uh the thing happened like yesterday uh in the family we test the kid that test positive except me and my husband and my daughter and i'm leaving when i did mine was negative so by grace of god it would be negative because the more i should take the test corona test to travel so that is my prayer but uh, i worship the living god and i believe god by grace it would be negative too thank you god bless you you are praying for visa right no i'm leaving but my they, my house there, there is corona so you hear me the corona yes so i'm leaving i'm waiting for a visa like it should come today or tomorrow because i'm living in so Saturday. you are asking god uh, for visa or for what you want to travel both of, because i could not yeah, hear the, you well because of my connection yeah the, the, the visa the, i'm waiting for a visa tomorrow but there is a case of covid in my house and yesterday i test myself the the 10 minute one it was negative and my husband was negative so i said by grace of god i'm taken by force there would be negative for corona because my house there's three cases of covid and i'm leaving and i'm waiting for my visa you hear me it's still here Is my voice clear? We hear you, but it's like uh, Baba's connection is not okay. Oh, okay, thank God. Okay, oh, yes. Uh, if he's, uh, it's not okay, you just do the prayer like last time and double this line. And the father of life. He's back, so he'll continue. God bless you. Oh, thank God. Sorry, connection. You hear me, please? Yeah, yeah you hear me? Yeah, thank you. I said I heard you say you are asking for visa. Yeah, um I'm, I'm asking the the visa should come today because they want eat uh you know the holiday for eat we sent it uh a uh, long to uh, almost two weeks ago but because they have holiday they didn't do the process and also in my house my kid they got corona test positive and mine is negative so by grace of god by uh, faith by fire by force i'm taking it to be negative too because like if it's positive that means i have to cancel it my traveling but i i worship the living god who not going to let me down so since yesterday test my test is negative it would be negative for good so okay we agree with you The Bible says those who trust in him they will never be put to shame. You stretch your hand we pray the visa you're waiting it come and the result you're waiting also is negative so that you can be able to travel and have good time with your family. In the name of Jesus and the fire of the Holy Ghost. We speak a speed up of the Holy Spirit. the visa as it is required you receive it in Jesus name and the papers concerning children result we sign them to be negative now in Jesus name every strange spirit fire of the holy ghost 
you spirit that try to interfere with this prayer. Fire of the Holy Ghost. 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 I rebuke you, you demon. I rebuke you, strange woman. I rebuke you, demon. Wherever you are, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus, I say to you, out of this life, out of these children, out of her, out of the judgment, out of the journey, out you demon, out you demon. Whatever she may have done wrong, be forgiven in Jesus' name. Jesus paid it all. You have no reason to accuse her. She's a free woman. I said to you, it is done. It is done. It is done. Completely healing in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. We thank God of you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. We celebrate with you. We want to hear your testimony concerning this. Amen. 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 Yeah, well, we have come this far. We thank God. Stretch our hands. We pray for viewers. If we just leave them, it's not fair. Viewers all over the world, wherever you are, under the influence of this telecast. May God, we salute your faith. May God answer you. Every spirit that troubles you, out in the name of Jesus, every spirit of infirmity, I cast it out in the name of Jesus. Whatever that is troubling you as an individual, out. Those who are sick, touch where the pain is, be healed of that cancer, be healed of that COVID-19. Be healed of that HIV. Be healed of that sickness. Be healed of that disease. Dry born, rise again. Rise again. I declare you free. Peace in your marriage. Peace in your home. Peace in your workplace. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, I declare free. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.